Hello everyone. This is Canfer here. Today I want to show you how to build your own concurrently multi-channel narrow FM scanner. So today I will show you how to build uh, this scanner using GNU Radio Companion under Windows 10 with uh, 32 blocks. So right now let's uh, create a new WXGUI let's define it name it as a concurrently It like uh, GNU radio scanner. Now we need a WX GUI slider. Let's define it as a center frequency. And let's name it as a center frequency. And let's make a default value like uh, 450.2 E6 from 450.2 megahertz. So the minimum value, let's make it is 400 megahertz. So let's type in 400 E6. And the maximum value, let's make it as a 470 four, uh, megahertz. So let's type 470 E6. And then let's make a number of steps, 1000. Okay. Now you can easily build the GNU radio scanner uh, easy steps so like uh, any analog scanner you just save the frequencies you want to scan uh, but the big impo the, the important things uh, the scanner should be at the same uh, your don gel bandwidth so if not at the same bandwidth of your don gel uh, it's uh, you can't uh, make it a scanner so if you have a air spy if, 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 if you have a hack RF you can scan all at the same bandwidth of your don gel or you can uh, put your center frequency uh, value so it's can covering the center frequency bandwidth so you can make it for uh, four six the center frequency so you can bandwidth at uh, 2.4 uh, megahertz in a cheap don gel or uh, like uh, 10 megahertz in air spy don gel and uh, like this so uh, what center frequency value you put uh, you can monitor behind it at the same your dongle support bandwidth okay uh, right now we need uh, a variable block let's delete uh, this sample rate variable from here Let's define the variable as a down rate. And 
and it's uh, make it value 250 kilo 250 e3 okay now we need another variable let's put it here let's define it as a sample rate so let's define it as a samp rate and let's make a default value 1 e6 so it's uh, 1 megahertz okay now uh, we need the WXGUI slider let's put it here Let's define the ID as a volume and let's label it as a vol. And the default value, let's make it full 100 and the minimum is 0 and the maximum is 100. And number of steps, it's uh, 100 is good. And horizontal flow, let's make the grid, uh, the grid position like 0, 16, 1, 1. I will post a picture here in this video how to use the grid position in easy way, how to make a GUI software, uh, how to put your uh, WXGUI slider in that when you launch it, uh, like in the corner up, in the corner left, in the down, in, the, in, in which position you want. I post a picture to define here this, just follow this video how to use this uh, grid position uh, using GNU radio slider or any uh, blocks uh, you want to put uh, in the exact uh, position when you launch the GRC file okay now we need another WX GUI slider Let's define it as a RF gain and the default value let's make it 15 and the minimum 0 and the maximum 48 for the RF, RF gain and then let's make the number of steps 12 is enough and uh, start horizontal and the floats let's uh, put this in grid position when you launch the software in 1.0.1.4 okay it's in a great position um i'm going to show you right now how to use the grid position here as you can see here the grid position here if if uh, you want to put like the volume when you launch the software here the volume button and the slider you need to put in the grid position here in the grid position you want to put 0011 so when you launch the GRC file, uh, it's uh, the volume button. It's appearing here in this corner. If you want uh, VFO here, VFO2 here, VFO3 here, RF gain here, uh, uh, PPM correction here, you just uh, type the value for the grid position like this. If you want here, let's make it at the two sixteen one four comma comma comma. So 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0,0,1,1, 0, 0, 0.0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0,0
you can choose where you want to put your slider your uh, center frequency input uh, what you want when you launch the GRC like in this uh, these positions I make it simple how to use the grid position in GNU Radio Companion okay now uh, we we make the volume we make the RF gain GUI saddle I show you how to put the grid position as you like now we need a variable let's put it here let's uh, define it ID as a channel width and uh, let's make the value 250 E3 so 250 kilohertz okay now we need uh, another WXGUI slider Okay, here let's define it as a channel freak one channel frequency one so here we put a vfo one frequency so if you we want to use today uh, just uh, two if if uh, uh, two vfos here scanner uh, because it's 32 block you can uh, repeat my steps to make it four five six or eight or 13 how much uh, scanner you want uh, VFOs, memories you can repeat uh, continuously what I am doing right now okay today my video I want to to put just uh, two VFOs so it's a longer video you can you, you can uh, upgrade it to four or five six how, how much you like Okay, let's define the this WXGUI slider as a channel frequency one. So let's define it as a channel freak one. And let's label it as a VFO freak one. VFO freak one. And let's make the default value for this VFO uh, 450.6 E6. You can define it as what you like, what frequency you like. When you launch the GRC file, and uh, sure you can change it uh, when you launch it, but uh, when you launch, you should have a frequency appearing. So let's make the minimum value is 400 E6 and let's make a maximum value of 470 E6 okay the number of steps is 100 and let's make a grid, grid uh, position uh, like a 2.0.1.4 I'm sorry not point it's comma point 2.0 to comma zero comma one comma four okay okay now we need another WX uh, GUI slider let's put it here and uh, let's define it as a channel frequency two we define it here a channel frequency one and label it as a VFO frequency one we right now we need to make another one and uh, define it as a channel frequency 2 and label it as a WFO frequency 2 so let's uh, define the ID as a channel freak 
2 and let's label it as a VFO freak 2 okay let's uh, make the default value as a 449.8 E6 and the minimum value is 400 E6 and the maximum value is 470 E6 okay and the number of steps 100 and horizontal and the float and blah 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 and let's make a grid position as a 3 comma 0 comma 1 comma 4 T014 make sure the channel frequency 1 VFO and channel frequency 2 VFO, uh, the default value frequency, it should be at the same your dongle bandwidth. And make sure you want to put the, the center frequency, the center frequency, and the channel frequency 1 and the channel frequency 2 at the same bandwidth. So the, channel, the center frequency that define the range of bandwidth behind it. So if you want to make a center frequency in a 446.0 megahertz, so uh, the, the channel frequency one should be at the same range of bandwidth of 440 megahertz center frequency. And uh, if you want to make uh, the center frequency like in, in four, uh, 50 megahertz the frequency 1 and the frequency 2 should be behind the center frequency of your support dongel bandwidth make sure you just follow these steps and these instructions so you can make easy build uh, narrow fm uh, cheap scanner using gnu ready companion okay now we need right now another uh, WX GUI slider let's put it here and now let's uh, label it as a scratch level so SQL level LEV so let's label it as a SQL and the default value let's make it minus 50 it's good and the minimum value let's make it minus 100 and the maximum value is 100 and let's make a number of steps as a 200 okay and let's make it horizontal and float and let's define the grid position here for a scratch button like uh, 1, 12, 1, 4. Okay. Okay. Now we need another WX GUI slider block. Here it's define it as a PPM correction. Let's define it as a PPM correction. Let's label it that's appear in GUI when you run the GRC file as a PPM correction. PPM correction. Okay. Let's make the default value zero and the minimum value is minus 60 and the maximum value is 60 enough let's make a number of steps 1000 and let's make it as a integer because we don't need like a, when you when you move the mouse like a 2.2 2.3 2.4 to 3 we need it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so we need it integer okay click okay now we need to preparing another block it's uh, osmo source let's 
put it here here's good okay okay now here in osmocom source let me make it more bigger the number of mb and the number of channel one and the sample rates make it it make sure it's sample rate and the channel zero frequency let's make it as a center frequency because uh, if you change the center frequency it should be changed the osmocom source so let's change it to the center frequency that we define back center freak and let's make a ppm correction a block we defined from WXGUI slider as a ppm uh, correction so let's put that ID here so let's type here a ppm Correction. Okay. And the channel zero RF gain, let's make it RF gain that we defined. Okay. Everything's correct right now. Okay. Now, we need a WXGUI FFT sync. GUI FFT sync. Let's put it here. And now let's connect the Osmocom source out to the WXGUI FFT sync in okay now let's uh, see the sample rate as a sample rate and the baseband frequency let's change it as a center frequency so when you change the center frequency with your mouse uh, from WXGI slider when you launch the, the, the GRC file so it should be changed the WXGI FFT sync in the spectrum you should change it the center frequency if you don't change it here it's uh, the the center frequency when you change it it's not appearing in uh, the spectrum so we should change the baseband frequency we should define it as a center frequency we defined earlier in center frequency block so let's put center freak here Okay, let's an RF scale, blah blah blah, it's 15, and let's, uh, let's put the average it's on, and zero, and automatic, okay, blah blah blah, everything is correct right now. Okay, let's, you can change it, this is the title as a FFT plot. I want to change it like uh, MWK scanner spectrum. It's up to you if you want to change it or not. I will change it here. Okay. Now, now we need the block. It's calling a multiply block. We need two of these. So every uh, VFO you build, you need one multiply block. So uh, just follow me step by step. I want to make this multiply here, this area for a VFO one for frequency one we, know we want to monitor and another multiply I will put down here 
to VFO2 for the frequency 2 we define. So we need this multiply 1 for the channel frequency 1 from WXGOI slider. And we need another multiply for the channel frequency 2 VFO frequency 2 slider. So right now let's put a multiply here. Let's make it putting here. This just follow my positions to make it very easy to to do it. So it's two is one. Okay. Now we need a signal source. This signal source for a VFO1 frequency one for this. I will right now show you how to make it here and how to make a VFO2. You can repeat VFO3, VFO4, VFO5. Today I want just to build a two VFOs scanner, memory scanner, so at the same bandwidth. Okay, signal source here. Let's open it and uh, the sample rate is sample rate and the frequency. Let's change it. Uh, let's type center freak minus channel freak. one okay so the frequency is the center frequency id here the center frequency minus channel freak one channel freak one we defined it from wxgui slider id okay okay now Let's connect the Osmocom source output to multiply in zero and let's connect the, the output here from signal source to the input in multiply. As you can see, let's flip. I, you can flip this block, just right click and uh, rotate it clockwise and uh, another rotate it clockwise. So I flip it to make it uh, easy to see what I am doing and what the, all the, the lines here. Okay. So the signal source going to multiply in and the osmocom source out going to multiply in for the vfo1 these for the channel frequency one as you can see okay now we need another multiply block for a vfo2 Let's put it here. Okay. Okay, now we need to connect this multiply to Osmocom source from Osmocom source out to multiply in zero, as you can see here, and now we need a, a signal source. Let's get it. Signal source. Another signal source here. Okay. 
make sure the sample rate is sample rate and the frequency let's make make it a center free that we define space then minus then space then channel freak two that we defined back in the first of the video as you can see here center freak minus channel freak two so this is for a v4 two okay now let's connect just a click in the output of the signal source here then connect in the input on multiply now let's flip uh, this block rotate counterclockwise another rotate counterclockwise and let's make it easy to see okay as you can see this is uh, this area for a vf01 this area for vf02 you can make another area for vf03 and for vf04 and the blah 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 you can make it as what you like how long your project is today i want to show you how to the principle how to do two vfos to monitor uh, to make a scanner with a VFO memory at the same range of your dongle bandwidth. Okay. Now, now we need a low pass filter for this area, for this VFO area one, and we need another v low pass filter for uh, this area v VFO two. So right now, let's bring a low pass filter block. Okay, let's put it here. Okay, let's make sure it's a complex, complex decimating FIR type and make sure to change uh, the, the decimation here to INT. Samp rate okay channel with and let's close it as you can see INT Sample rate that we define with a channel width that we define and close it. This formula here in decimation. Okay. And again, it's uh, it's one. It's good. And the sample rate is a sample rate. And the cut off frequency make it one e three. And the transition width is at 12.5 e3 this uh, number is very important so if you become closer to the specific frequency you saved and you want to monitor if any frequency if any activity become closer it's it should be not uh, hearing in your radio so like when you put uh, uh, 446 0.1250 megahertz in your radio you can catch 446.1250 megahertz but you can't catch 446.1350 megahertz so the, the, this cut off frequency and the transition width is very important to make it closer enough to your specific frequency that the squash is will be active or deactive okay it's okay now now we need uh, another low pass filter
let's put it here here is good I think as you can see one low pass filter for the VFO area number one another one low pass filter for this VFO area number two you can repeat this down to make uh, VFO3, VFO4 what we see earlier okay now here in uh, this low pass filter for a VFO2 a frequency 2 let's make sure it's the FIR type is complex complex decimating and the decimation let's make it INT SAMP rate with channel with okay close it as you can see and again one and the sample rate is sample rate and the cut of a frequency one e3 one kilohertz and the the transition width is uh, 12.5 kilohertz so 12.5 E3 and now thinking okay okay now let's connect the multiply here to the low pass filter in and let's connect the multiply here for V4 frequency 2 to low pass filter in 2 as you can see okay now we need a simple squatch block let's put it here for a vfo1 frequency one area here okay let's define it as a the, the threshold let's make it minus 50 is good I think and the alpha it's uh, 1 e minus 4 okay now let's connect the output of the low pass filter here to the input of a simple scratch okay now we need another simple scratch for a low pass filter here down for the VFO area number two, uh, frequency two. Okay, let's repeat these steps. Let's make the threshold is uh, minus 50 and the alpha is one E minus four. Let's connect the output of the low pass filter to the input of the simple squatch here okay now after simple squatch we need a throttle block okay let's put the throttle block here and make sure the sample rate is sample rate and the VIC length is 1 and the ignore RX uh, rate tag is uh, true okay okay now let's connect the simple scratch here to the throttle L okay now we need another throttle for the VFO2 frequency 2 area here down the sample rate sample rate and the one and the ignore rx is true let's click ok and let's connect the simple scratch out to the throttle n okay now we need after that we need the fm d mode block
Okay, let's put the FMD model block here. Okay, let's change, make sure to put the channel rate as a down rate that we define in the back of the video. And the audio decimation, let's make it one. And the deviation, it's uh, 75000, uh, and the audio passes 15k, uh, and the audio stop is 16k. And the gain is 10, and the toe is uh, 75 e minus 6. Everything's correct. Okay, now let's connect the from the throttle output block to the FMD mode block in. Okay, now we need another FMD mode for the VFO2 frequency 2. So let's bring the FMD mode here let's put it here okay let's make the channel rate as a down rate and the audio decimation is 1 and the deviation is 75 kilo, blah blah blah, everything is correct. Let's click OK. Now let's connect it from the throttle block output to the FM D mode N. Okay, now let's move the page here. Now we need a rational reassembler block. So Let's put it here. Now make sure the the type is uh, float float real tabs. So float float real tabs. If if R. Okay. And uh, make sure to change the interpolation to twenty four and the decimation to two five zero. Okay. Okay. Now let's connect from the FMD mode out to the rational reassembler in. Okay. Okay. Now. We need another rational reassembler for uh, the VFO2 area here for the frequency 2. We need to scanning monitor. So let's bring another rational reassembler block and let's put it here. Okay, let's uh, define it. Let's change the type to the float float real tabs FFR. And the interpolation 24 and the decimation let's make it 250 okay and it's connected from the FMD mode out block to the rational reassembler in okay okay now we need uh, a multiply const that we define it as a volume we need a two multiply const, one for the for this area up for the VFO1 frequency one and another one for the VFO2 frequency two. So let's bring the multiply const. Let's put it here. Okay. Let's change the I/O type as a float, and the constant. Let's uh, change it uh, to the volume. One hundred. 
like this. Okay. Okay, now let's connect the rush from the rational reassembler output here up to this multiply const. Out to the, I'm sorry, from the out to the in. Okay, let's flip this block, rotate the counterclockwise, another rotate to the counterclockwise. You can see now it's good. Okay, now we need another multiply const for this area down for the VFO2 frequency. Okay. Now let's change the IO type to the float and the constant. Let's make it as a volume 100, like this. Okay. Okay, now let's connect the V4 area here down to from the output of the rational reassembler to the input of the multiply const. Okay, now let's flip this block, rotate it counterclockwise, another rotate counterclockwise. So let's put like this here. It looks good. Okay, now we need these two multiply const blocks. We need to put it with uh, mix these two to the add a block. So let's make an add block. Let's put it here. I'm sorry. Add. Okay, let's flip this block. To make the input in the right side. Okay. Here, from multiply const output from the VFO1, here this up to the add input, and another from multiply const from down to the add input. But make sure to change the IO type to the float, and now clicking. OK, as you can see here. OK. Now, if you this add, add it to the two, to these two VFO1, VFO2. If, if you make another VFO here, three, like this here, if you make a three, when you got here another one multiply constant in the final, so here in the add, you, you, you want to change the number of input, let's make it three. As you can see, you have a three. So you can add the area here down the, from the Russian reassembler VFO3 if you build another VFO. So you can add it here. If you if you want to build four, let's make it four. If you want to build like six, let's put the number of input six, as you can see. So you can add all these here together. So now, we just make a two V4, so let's make an input number of input two. As you can see here. Okay, now we need a, a main power scratch, a block. So let's bring a power scratch here. Let's put it here. Okay, the input in the left side, so let's make the input in the right side. So let's rotate counterclockwise. Another rotate counterclockwise. So let's open it and make sure make the type as a float and the threshold. Let's make it as a scratch level that we defined SQL LEV. So the alpha, let's make it one, and the ramp, let's make it one. Okay. Okay, now from the output of the add to the input of the scratch, 
of the power squatch. Now finally, the final block is uh, audio sync. So you, so to, to hear it in your PC, audio sync. Let's put the audio sync here. It's flip. It's rotated counterclockwise. Another counterclockwise. So let's put the audio sync here. Now let's open it. Okay, the sample rate. It's the sample rate. Let's make it uh, 24 kilohertz. And uh, okay, to block yes and uh, number of input one. Let's click OK, and now from the pulse quatch output to the audio sync input. OK, it's look like we finished these 32 blocks here. As you can see, let's bring this all together here. As you can see, what we make here. A central frequency, a down rate variable, a sample rate variable, a WXGUI slider, we, we make it as a volume and we, we we put the grid position as what I I bring the photo of how to use this grid position and we make a WXGUI slider, Let's, we define it as a RF gain and uh, a channel frequency 1 and another channel frequency 2, the channel frequency 1 here, this area here and the channel frequency 2, we define, we label it as a frequency 2 we put it here, as you can see and we, we make a PPM correction slider and uh, we make a WXGUI slider and we make a WXGUI FFT sync and uh, make sure the base band frequency, let's make it as a center frequency as what we say earlier uh, as you can see from the Osmocom source here we 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 take it to the multiply and the signal source to the multiply and then to the low pass filter after that for simple scratch and the throttle now FMD mode and Russian reassembler and multiply const and we mix this to the add, then power scratch, scratch, then audio sync. So we have two frequencies here. You can build it three, just add another multiply here down and another signal source here down. And just repeat these steps, make another low pass filter, another scratch, another throttle, another FMD mode, another Russian reassembler, and you make another multiply constant put here and just just increase the add value here to the 3 to the 4 I build one for myself for 15 uh, for 13 VFO blocks so it's look like too big to take it down and you can increase uh, the, the page by here you can uh, change the size uh, like uh, uh, 4096 uh, with uh, 2024 you can increase this page here from here value to if you, if you have too many blocks okay now let's let's uh, save this uh, test project to the desktop like uh, vfo scanner GRC to the desktop VFO scanner test okay okay now let's define let's click here to generate the flow graph okay now let's try it as you can see here the squatch level the volume 100 the RF gain the VFO frequency 1 I make it 450.6 the VFO frequency 2 
is a 449.8 megahertz and the center frequency is 450.2 as you can see the center frequency with the V4 frequency 1 and the V4 frequency 2 all these are the same are the same uh, bandwidth of uh, your uh, dongle that support it so because I think uh, it's boring here because my PC is not too good and I am recording uh, this video uh, I don't know if I can right now test test this so let's make a VFO frequency number 145.0.6 let's try to test it okay let's Because I build a, I make a, a big video recorder here. Let's try it. Let's make a PPM correction for my dawn gel. Let's try to test. I put this frequency. This is uh, my acoustic kilo. Testing one two three, one two three testing, one two three one two three. One, two, three testing. As you can see here, this is a VFO number one. This is my acoustic kilo testing VFO number one. Now let's change the VFO frequency number two. Okay, I will just put a number two VFO. Four, four, nine point eight zero zero. This is a micro kilo testing a VFO number two. This is a GNU radio scanner with a memory save VFOs uh, with supporting your dongle bandwidth. So, so I, I see uh, everything is correct. Let's go back to VFO number one point five zero point six. This is uh, uh, my PC kilo testing the V4 number one. Everything is correct. Okay, now we can change the center frequency here. You can change all these here, like 446. Let's make a. The center frequency is 446. As you can see here, it's changing to 446. Now let's make a V4. We need to monitor 445.8. Let's make it 44. 5.8 hitting enter and let's make another one 446.3 446.3 four, okay now we have 446.3 four, and 445.8 four, let's try 445.7 four, 445.7 four, 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 we should not hear anything this is uh, testing 1 2 3 as you can see my PC not not the scratch is active and my PC not have any activity here. Let's try it, uh, the correct frequency we defined. Uh, 445.8, 445.8. Okay, it's trying. This is uh, my PC uh, kilo. This thing uh, 445.8 megahertz. Okay, my my radio uh, has a low battery. My video is turning off. I don't have a battery. I need to charge my uh, my Bowfinger uh, radio. So uh, as you can see, everything is uh, is working. And this is a long uh, video today. How to make your own GNU radio scanner. Uh, so it's not a scanner that jumping in the frequency. It's a scanner at the same dongel bandwidth and uh, VFOs so it's good for monitoring uh, narrow FM frequency analog frequency uh, that have uh, at uh, all at the same your supported dongel bandwidth if you have a uh, 2.4 supported if you have uh, like air spy if you have a more bigger like uh, hack RF okay YouTube uh, let's uh, stay tuned for uh, another video how to build your own
GNU radio applications uh, using uh, GNU radio companion under Windows 10. Uh, this is Ganfer here and uh, thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for another uh, video. Uh, thank you very much. Bye bye.